This is Spencer of the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Gra- Gabriel Iglesias. Try and get that <laughs> great, out there. Great, great <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, the like star that. of Fluffy, um, which I guess you would describe as a concert film. I don't know what the best term is. I guess, the, yeah, the best and the most honest uh, way to describe it is a comedy concert film. Yes. Uh, it's about an hour and a half long. Which I, I, I want to, I mean, we don't have to spend too much time on it, but I wanted to quickly ask, what was the difference like in terms of the experience of filming this versus, you know, just a special? Because, I mean, I've obviously seen specials of yours and stuff like that on Comedy <laughs> Central and whatnot. I'm just curious if there is a lot of practical difference in terms of making it on your behalf or is it just a larger scale version of what you've done? It's before? basically a larger scale version of what we've been doing. Uh, I've, I've had the same director uh, since day one, Manny Rodriguez. Manny directed my first uh, one hour special, Hot and Fluffy. He directed <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. a Fat and Fluffy, then Aloha Fluffy. And then, of course, <laughs> I get this opportunity to do the movie. And uh, the film company had their directors that they wanted to use. And I said, no, we got to use the guy that I've been using. He knows me. The he horse that got me. you there. Whatever that's the expression. horse that got me there. And yeah. that's the horse we got to go with. So uh, it was Manny. And it was also uh, Bruce Ryan who uh, built all the sets. He built mm-hmm. and designed all the backgrounds for all the specials. And was this was the big set. one. Yeah. This was the big one. It was a uh, scale model of the uh, Golden, Golden Gate, Gate Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. Um, I, <laughs> it's funny. I mean, this is a, a comedy movie, but... You know, one of my favorite things is actually seeing comedians play serious, play dramatic. And that's mm-hmm. not a huge element of that. I don't want people to be scared off thinking this is like yeah, it's a, a serious, serious movie. It's yeah. not a comedy. Yes, but a comedy. Uh, I found that to be actually some of the most interesting stuff in the material. And even right off the bat when you're doing the flashback to, you know, when your parents met and your childhood and stuff like that, where your mother, I, I don't know if this is factual or just dramatic for the movie but you have like a moment where it hints at you know domestic abuse was, occurring it was, it prior was a, it was to a rough, your father. rough situation before and, my dad came in the picture and that definitely. was like a moment of honesty that i was both shocked and impressed to include in the movie and there's other stories and stuff that you talk about yeah. that are very deeply honest because that's not exactly the way you would want to how do you start a comma really that's right. how you're going to start no, it? i mean <laughs> it was something that you could have easily just glossed over Avoided. and not included yeah, yeah. in that intro but it was like wow that seems like a very honest detail why else would you include that i think that needed to be established because of the fact that my mom was still married when uh she met mm. my dad yeah that's true and there you know i didn't want people to think that oh this lady's just out there running fair around enough for, for fair enough whatever reason i mean she had her reasons and uh you know I thought it was important for people to understand her position at that time mm. and why she was looking for a way out. So one of the things in that regard I also want to ask about is, you know, you have these the story with your father, for instance. Mm-hmm. What is it like in terms of trying to create these stories and balance the dramatic and the honest with the comedic? Because, I mean... In some ways, you could have just filmed this as just a storytelling. I know, you know, like Henry Rollins or whatever who tells stories. And it would have been a fascinating film, too. But at the same time, it is very funny and it is very interesting and playful and whatnot. What is it like trying to balance that dramatic and that serious? It it is. It is very challenging because you got to, you know, it's a comedy. You can't take away from that. If you're labeling it as a comedy, it's got to be a comedy. Uh, So to make sure that, you know... I was able to go into that little vein a little bit, but you got to always keep bringing it back. You can't just go into this dark place and not bring any humor to it anymore and all of a sudden forget what you were doing. Uh, so I had to constantly remind myself because whenever I'd go up on stage and I'd tell these stories, sometimes it was really funny. Sometimes it was like, oh, my God, he needs a hug and a cookie. And it, it, there was some nights like that. And so uh, over the course of the year, you know, telling these stories, making sure that I could find that balance in there. And eventually when we got to the film, uh, filming of it, you know, I felt that we were right there on it. And they didn't edit any of that portion. And I made sure that none of that got touched because I wanted to make sure it was as no, honest it as fe- I could it make felt, it. It felt very interesting, very um, well composed in terms of the balance between comedy and – because, I mean, as I said, it could have been a very interesting, serious story in and of mm-hmm. itself, but it was very well composed. Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about is your stepson. Um, not just because it's such a funny story when you're telling it, but I also found it very interesting that you are – you seem to be very proud as a stepfather. Is that something that took you a long time to get used to? Is it something that, you know, you've 
come to see as a significant portion of yourself? Because it seemed like a very important element of you and of It uh, is, well. and yes, it did take a little while to get to that point. You don't just step in there and all of a sudden take over as a daddy and go from day one, oh, it's all good and gravy. <laughs> it took a while. I mean, just when I got together with my girlfriend, I wasn't very hot on the idea that I was getting myself into a relationship that had a pre-started family attached to it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so that it did take a little while. It did. And of course, I was catching heat from my family and they're like, what are you doing? You know, you know, you have all the options you have. This is the route you're taking. And I'm like, you know, but she's cool and he's cool. And so uh, it, it took a while to get to that point to where we're at now, obviously. And it's, uh, you know, now it's, we're cool. We're great. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And he, he was at the screening the other night. And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> where I mean, do we take it from here? It's interesting, too, because it's not just like you've come to terms with it. It's something that you actively seem proud of. I mean, I think there's even like a credit at some point that says like to all the stepfathers or something like that. In the, the I think incorrect. it's important to tell a positive story about step parents because step parents have always been labeled as the bad guy. They, they never get the good credit. They always get the, oh, they came in and like even the horror movies, they made a movie called Stepfather. You know, it's like, uh, and yeah, they made it too. And they, and they remade it. You know, it's like <laughs> step parents always get the bad rap, but it's like, you know, there's, there's uh, so many positive ones that have made differences and have stepped into those shoes when the other one wasn't there. And so I think it's about time that someone does say something positive because there is. In terms of, you know, just constructing this entire, um, hour and a half of, I don't know, if you want to call it material or stories or however you think about it conceptually, is there some way that you step back and you say, I want to structure it like this? You know, a movie traditionally has a three-act structure or something like that. Is that something that you step back and be like, okay, you know, I don't know every single word I want to say because you said you do all your mm -hmm. material on stage and work it out that way. Was there like a, a sort of like, I want this initial point sort of is my goal for the first act. Here is where I want to reach it with the second act. And then I yeah. want to bring it home with like your, your father's story or something like that. Um, in the beginning, it was just, you know, it was random as far as the order of things and then you know trying to make sure that I put it together and that I present the more serious content you know you don't want to open up with that and I, I, tough, I, I felt that like it was best to save that towards the end where once I gave them a full hour of regular just you know performance and stand-up now let me take them into a little bit of a different uh, vein and a different uh, feeling and uh, I thought it was important that I tie and, and started off by telling that first story, that little mini film up yeah, front. Yeah, yeah, and this way it all ties in back at the end. Mm, it's, yeah, it's a good uh, circle. Um, one of the interesting things for me to observe uh, at the Q&A last night was sort of like the interaction between you and your fans. Like mm -hmm. there seems to be... I don't know what you want to call it, a familiarity, almost like... A, like they they seem to embrace you as if... You are somebody they know, they know and see every day. Like they treat it as like a general friendship. And I mean, obviously you, you're very cordial to them. You treat them well and all that sort of stuff. What is it like in terms of the, uh, that developing and sort of what has that experience been like as you've progressed through your career? Because um, it really seems quite unique in terms of like, you know. It, it, the, you know what? It, it actually, it seems magical at times because yeah. it's like the the effect on uh, that I'm having on, on some people is like, wow. You know, it's I think at times I feel like Santa and there's little kids around and they're like, Santa. <laughs> like that's kind of like the best vibe I get. I mean, and to watch a grown man with his kids totally just flip and geek out and start shaking you know my uh, god i'm fumbling with the camera gotta uh, get a picture i mean it's it's you know I, I don't, I, that's not like a rock star vibe that's like a, a familiar just excited like man this guy makes me happy and you know it's it's an amazing feeling and, and in the beginning it was it was just oh hey you're that guy <laughs> that's how it started off it started many years ago hey you're that guy and then i was like you're you're that iglesias guy <laughs> And then it was fluffy. And then it was just like every, every time a special would come out, the response from it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And now it's, like I said, it's to the point where... Do you think it's because of your honesty or your openness about yourself and your flaws? I think, or like, it, I think it is. I think it is because a lot of times people say, you remind me of a cousin. You remind me of a friend. You remind me of, of, of an uncle. You remind me of somebody that I remind them of. There's either the, the personality or the look or the smile. Something connects them to a, a positive memory. And I think that positive memory is what gives me that, you know. And plus, I, I mention it too. You know, I, I, I let people know I'm flawed. I'm a flawed person. And I don't look 
threatening. You know, I'm, I'm a guy who's not supposed to be in this position according to Hollywood. Right. I don't fit that normal uh, mold, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that people understand the struggle that I've had to get to this point, and I think that's what relates to people and the fact that I don't, you know, I don't rub people the wrong way. So the film is fluffy. Um, fluffy it yeah. starts coming out July 25th, July I believe. July 25th. Uh, Originally, it was supposed to come out July 11th, and uh, they didn't want me competing with soccer, and I'm all for that. I don't want to compete with the World Cup. <laughs> it probably works yeah. out. You know? I have no problem going up against the Planet of the Apes. I'm like, all right, I'll take on the yeah. monkeys, yeah. but then no. Well, then you can't fight soccer. It's, so. a, it's a good dip in the summer, so I think that'll yeah, work out in your so favor. Yeah, a couple of weeks, and I'll go up against Hercules. So. Uh, f- website or information about the film? Best, uh, best way to go is uh, just Google the word fluffy, and and everything, including <laughs> the movie, pops up. Okay. And in terms of you and your upcoming stuff, where's the best place? Twitter or anything like Again, that? Again, Google Fluffy and all of it's there. I'm on every social network you can think of. You know, even Google Plus. Nobody touches that, but apparently I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube videos, I'm, I'm all over it. And it is really me that runs it. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you the best of luck with the film. Thank you. Two thousand can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and a few.